You're wired in smallcapvoice.com. Following is a presentation of smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support. Now, with your online business briefing, smallcapvoice.com's Stuart T. Smith. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here today once again at smallcapvoice.com. And as you just heard, I am your host, Stuart Smith, and we are welcoming back to the show Positive ID Corporation. The company's traded on the over the counter bulletin board exchange under the ticker symbol PSID. Now, you might recall we had the chairman and CEO, Bill Carrigal, on the show, oh, uh, I think it was around Feb middle of February. And at that time, we went over the basic building blocks of the company, the management team. We went over kind of the 10,000-foot view of the company. And today, we want to talk about the glucose chip. There's been a lot of news about that out here. Take a look at the press wire for the company. Follow along with that news. Again, to do that, use that ticker symbol PSID or just visit us right here at smallcapvoice.com. So without any further ado, let's welcome back to the show the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Bill Carrigal. Bill, how are you today? I'm doing well, Stuart. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to be back with you. Well, thank you. You've been a very busy man. We appreciate your time here at smallcapvoice.com. Let's talk first about some of the recent news. Monday, March 5th, Positive ID Corporation finalizes first-in-class development of a fully synthetic glucose sensing system, a critical component of an artificial pancreas. If you would, Bill, please provide us your personal insight into the significance of this achievement, this development of a fully implantable glucose sensor. How does it work, and what makes this applicable to an artificial pancreas? Go ahead, Bill. Stuart, we started this process a little over three years ago, and the product Glucochip began with a piece of intellectual property and a patent that we own for an embedded biosensor. Uh, what we importantly did three years ago is we coupled with a, uh, an expert chemistry company by the name of Receptors, who on their proprietary technology platform, for which we have an exclusive license for glucose sensing, has developed a glucose sensor that will go at the end of that microchip. So the product, which will, again, be about the size of a grain of rice, can be inserted into uh, the interstitial tissue to measure blood plasma in the, in the interstitial fluid and be able to take real-time blood glucose readings in vivo, uh, which can then be read through a RFID scanner when passed over the uh, in injection or insertion site. What we importantly announced this week was the completion of the glucose sensing system, which includes the testing and the proof of product uh, that the technology and the, the sensing platform works in blood plasma. What that means is it brings us to the next stage of development, which is to couple the sensing and the electronics into an integrated product and then encapsulate it in the bio membrane that we're actually currently testing and had a previous announcement on our preliminary test results with the Diabetes Research Institute down at Jackson uh, in my uh, University of Miami. Uh, so bringing this all together is very important because if you think about the artificial pancreas project and its importance to type 1 diabetics, uh, there are two sides of that equation. And the one that we've been focused on is the ability to be able to take a continuous glucose readings and have continuous glucose monitoring, which will then allow for the other side of that equation, which would be the, uh, the insulin pump, to be able to provide the appropriate levels of insulin to mimic the, the functioning of a healthy insulin-producing pancreas. So the, the major uh, development that we've been working on is to provide that continuous glucose monitoring element and through our testing, uh, we were very proud to announce that uh, we believe we've solved that part of the, the, the equation. And now we'll work uh, with our partner to integrate the two pieces together into an integrated product, of course, I including the development around the semi-permeable membrane uh, that we've been working on and, and testing with the Diabetes Research Institute. Well, it sounds like an extremely intricate process. What remaining developments are ahead? Well, importantly, we need to finish the study that is ongoing with the, the DRI down in Miami to be able to test the life and biocompatibility of the membrane. Because when you think about what I described, which was a microchip the size of a grain of rice, uh, and the fact that it will sit in a, in a special tissue, it's integrally important. 
important that it maintain a semi-permeable membrane for an extended period of time so that that membrane doesn't foul and thereby render the device non-functioning because of biofoul, scar tissue, or otherwise clotting around the microchip itself. So we were very pleased with the intermediate uh, step progress uh, that we've made with DRI in testing in, uh, in rodents, and we'll continue that study throughout the course of this year. At the same time, uh, we're going to begin the design of the electronics that go between the sensor on the tip of this microchip with the antenna uh, and the onboard electronics of our embedded biosensor so that as we complete the process of testing the semi-permeable membrane, we can have an integrated product that would then be ready for system testing, full boat, the entire, uh, the entire product. Uh, and it's our goal to be at the prototype level during 2013. And what kind of IP protection do you have? That's intellectual property protection. What, what do you have in place to protect these great ideas that you're developing now? There's a couple levels of protection that we have. The first is on the embedded biosensor or the microchip upon which the sensor sits. Uh, we have a patent, a patent that was granted in 2007. Uh, so that's the, that, that, that's the first level of protection. On the sensor itself, uh, that we've developed in conjunction with our partner receptors. They have an extensive patent portfolio that protects the technology and the science around their sensor development. And we, uh, Positive ID, has the exclusive license for the use of that sensor technology and intellectual property uh, in this product, uh, in any product with uh, focused on glucose sensing. So when you wrap that together, we believe we have a very unique position with a very strong level of intellectual property protection. Well, let's jump into another press release. Positive ID achieves positive preliminary results from Diabetes Research Institute study at the University of Miami. Bill, if you would, explain the significance of these positive results for us. Well, that, uh, Stuart, that goes back to one of the steps I talked about in the product development. And importantly, when you think about the sensor coming together at the end of the microchip and then covering it with the semi-permeable membrane, it's critically important that that semi-permeable membrane, while sitting in interstitial tissue, can defeat the biofoul process or some of the natural defenses that the body puts uh, up to any implanted device so that there can be a constant and equal flow of blood plasma through the, through the semi-permeable membrane. So about six months ago, we initiated a study with the Diabetes Research Institute to test those semi-permeable membranes that we've designed for, the per, for this product and to test them in a rodent study, uh, again, testing the extended periods of time of biocompatibility through uh, the, the, the passage of blood through the semi-permeable membrane. We announced not too long ago the positive preliminary results from that study, we need to extend the duration of that study uh, through the end of 2012, uh, and we're hopeful that the results that we continue to see demonstrate that this membrane construction uh, will work uh, and will work for an extended period of time with relation to this product. This is a massive market in the U.S. alone that you're tapping into with the Gluco chip. And listeners, look at the press release. There's some t statistics in here. Uh, what percent of the 25 million children and adults with diabetes would be able to use this Gluco chip? All diabetics would be able to use the Gluco chip for the purpose of taking real time blood glucose readings. The subset of the market that encompasses type 1 diabetics, where you extend the utility to part of the artificial pancreas uh, project ranges, depending on you know, uh, estimates I've seen, between 5 to 10 percent of the total marketplace. So this is a product that has utility for all diabetics, but as it relates to artificial pancreas, that's a type 1 focused product, again, do both sides of the equa equation, which is the continuous glucose monitoring, and then the ability to deliver insulin against the, those readings. How do you expect to market this product, and what would this mean to your company from a financial standpoint? Well, Stuart, given the size of the market and the size of the problem of diabetes, both in our country and internationally, I think the end answer is that the market opportunity is huge. How a company of our size 
but with our very substantial intellectual property platform and product development, we'll be able to get into that market and to be able to have success in bringing this product to diabetics to improve their uh, improve their lives. Uh, will come through important partnerships uh, that will develop both on the sales, marketing, distribution, and manufacturing side of the equation. Uh, as you would imagine, with uh, announcements like the ones we've put out in the development uh, that we've been working on uh, as it relates to this product for several years, we are engaged uh, continuously in discussions with interested parties. And I think you know, a, a clear sign of our progress uh, will be demonstrated over the course of the next year as we begin to line up the type of partners who are going to help us bring this important product to market. Well, listeners, once again, we are speaking with Positive ID Corporation, and we are thankful to have their chairman and CEO with us again, Bill Carrigal. Bill, thank you so much for your time here. We appreciate you going into the detail that is necessary to go over these elaborate processes that you and your company are working on. The Gluco chip sounds fascinating. We look forward to great things from you and your company here in 2012, and we expect you back here at smallcapvoice.com so we can learn more about what you're doing in some of these other areas that your company manages. Thanks so much for your time, Bill. Stuart, thank you again so much. It was great talking to you. Well, listeners, if you'd like to learn more about Positive ID Corporation, all you have to do is visit them at their website, Positive ID Corp. Dot com. Of course, you can just visit smallcapvoice.com as well. We link out to everything that Positive ID has, a detailed quote, their filings with the SEC, all their recent news, of course, these interviews, some original blogs that we've had written about the company that break down these processes even further and allow you to understand the target market for the company. Thanks so much for your interest in Positive ID Corporation. For Bill Carrigal, I'm Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for listening.